Welcome to Swap 2.0, Part 8. Today's episode is going to be historic and folkloric. So what you're looking at is a handmade gas tank that came out of the 55 Chevy that was installed 40 years ago. Hard to believe. So they took a 78 Chevy uh, Camaro and used everything in it and relocated the tank in the back and built this thing from scratch. It's really kind of cool. So we're going to try to reuse it. This is the filler tank over here. And then my sender unit, um, we couldn't figure out what it was. It turns out to be a 1983 Malibu. <laughs> so it's a little bit bigger than the older ones in the, in the 50s and 60s, a little bigger mouth. So that's coming. We'll have that here on Friday. But I wanted to give you a quick update on uh, how this in-tank pump. So I'm using the um, Hyperfuel tight fit in-tank pump there, 4,000, 40015, 40016, and 40017. And I've used these several times before, and I like them better than the Walbro. This is the Hyperfuel pump itself, and they're much quieter. In fact, you can barely hear them. So that's why I use them. And this is a cool little a way to do an in-tank pump in any tank if you've got enough headroom. So you can see here we've got, we got plenty of room to put this in. This is the ring. This is the, the actual um, in and out and then your overflow. But what I do is I use these, oh, I think it's 2004 um, Corvette fuel filter and regulator. And I use them on my LS, my Gen 4, and I'm going to use them on my Gen 5 now, too. And they're, they're predetermined pressure at 58 PSI, so they work really good. And then you can mount your return line close. So what I do is I take the return line. Instead of having the return line go back into here, I use the return line that goes into the sender, and which used to be out, becomes an in. And then we use the sender to send our regular ohm signal back to the Dakota Digital Gauges. So this is a quick uh, view of the parts and pieces oh, that's going to go together and before I actually do the drilling. Okay, so we've cut the hole. It's 2 and eighth inch, and they have this kind of cool little anodized unit right down here that you put in from the inside out, okay, screw in these machine screws and then that uh, fuel pump connects into there so you put it in like this um, fold it in and after you measure it up you cut it now one thing I wanted to bring to your attention is I did I mean I'm not a big fan of hose clamps and they're you know they're just I don't like them so in this case we have used a PEX type crimp band PEX is the standard plumbing for your, your house, half inch and three quarters. And you can get these really cool crimp um, fittings instead of using the hose clamp. So I got these out of Amazon. You can get a, a selection like this uh, for around 30 bucks. And I really like them. I've used them quite a bit already. So the hole's been cut. I'm going to fold in the fuel pump. This is actually um, the lowest one, which is 255 liters per hour, which is plenty for, for an LS1, 2, or 3. And after I get that done, then we'll see the next part. Okay, so we've completed the uh, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel pump installation. And you can see we've got it connected up with the fuel filter, fuel regulator. As I mentioned before, this uh, Corvette product that I use on all the LS uh, builds along with the LTs. And the way it works is that it mounts back here towards your tank with a return line. So here's the pump out, it goes in, then it goes back out here to up front to the engine. And then any fuel that's not used based upon the pressure returns back into the tank. So this is your overflow line here, which I normally connect up and just run a line up over here. And then when I get my sender, 
I'll uh, put my sender in there, but it's mocked up and ready to go, ready to bolt in once the parts get in. So that's your hyperfuel in-tank pump insulation guide, and I really recommend these because they're quiet, they're easy to retrofit, and you can do it in a couple, three, four hours. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.